home looks like right now and of course it took me a while to set up my room but at the end of the day I finally got the TV that I wanted I have this huge couch behind me and as you can see I got my favorite yellow pillows as well so that you know as a matter of fact it added a pop of color now if you look at it if you look outside my house you see that you know this is a street that is down there and you can see a lot of cars and I do understand it looks very noisy but as a matter of fact it's not pretty noisy but to an extent in the night it's very calm and I have a beautiful view behind where I can see a beautiful lake here. So this is what my house looks like and I like the fact that you were able to see my house and what how it looks like from the windows of my house. But let me tell you a very interesting fact. This house that I live in right now has been in our family for generations and to be honest if I go back a few years when when you know probably my father was living in this house it looked nothing like this. He did not have this beautiful plasma TV neither did he have my beautiful cushions which had its pop of color or the lamps or everything that you see. But as a matter of fact if we go back a little bit in time we see that it looks something like this. Now as you can see the lamps, the TVs, the table, the sofa, even the, the you know can you see this particular uh, cupboard that is there, even the cupboards look very different and if you actually look outside this house's window way back then you would see that it looked like this. See it's pretty tranquil right very peaceful very quiet not a lot of buildings you can see the lake very clearly right now and actually looks more widespread and more greenery around me. So what happened right what is different between these two the surroundings changed over a period of time and in our class today we are going to understand a little bit about our environment. So everybody I welcome you to Baiju 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and of course our class today is going to be on the first chapter of geography which is our environment and I'm going to understand this not the cliche way by telling you what is there in the textbook but we are going to make observations today. So I hope all of you are excited for today's class. Now I do understand I started this class slightly differently when I started with a small story but I hope that all of you are excited for today. Now of course this video is live streamed for some of our audience which is why for students who are here in the live stream I will take a minute to check with all of you if my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is please give me a quick thumbs up in the chat to let me know that we are good to go. Yes? So give me a thumbs up in the live chat so that I know that we are good to go and students letting you know that we are going to finish this easy peasy chapter in the next 40 minutes and of course I know a lot of you here are asking me if you're going to be having a mentee quiz. See right now of course we will do a separate mentee quiz with mind map and important questions but right now we will only look at the concepts and we'll finish it off real fast okay it's very easy chapter right. So I'm sure all of you here are excited and I can see that a lot of you here are in the live audience right now I can see good 100 plus students so quickly make sure that all of you hit the like button on this video do not forget to subscribe because as you all know Baiju's champ series is going to be helping you become the early bird in your class where you will learn all the concepts before your friends you will learn it with utmost clarity and if you are a student who's watching this after much after the live stream do not forget to hit the subscribe button and in case if you feel like ma'am why should I hit the subscribe button what 5-10 minutes of this video and I'm 100% sure that you will be convinced. Now a few ground rules that I would like to establish right. So I would like to talk about what you can expect from this class today right. What can you expect. So first and foremost I am going to be covering all the concepts which are there from chapter 1 which is why please make sure you have your notebooks, you have your textbooks right. Please make sure you have a pencil or a pen with you so that you can make a note of all the important pointers. Now secondly I would like to tell you that for the live audience especially I will be doing doubt boards okay. So I may not take your doubts as and when 
then you tell me, right? So if you keep texting me saying, ma'am, you are ignoring me, I will write these words on screen. You are ignoring me, you are not replying to me, so on and so forth. If you tell it is not because I am truly going to be learning, I mean ignoring you. It's just that I am focusing on teaching, which is why I need you all to pay attention, right? And third and most important thing, I will be giving you homework towards the end, right? And I need you all to give me the answer for the homework in the comments because I am going to be correcting this, right? I will be replying replying to all of you and I'll be correcting your answers. So this is what you can expect today. So everybody, please make sure you give me a thumbs up and for students who will tell after this also you are ignoring this and that and many other comments I may see my way. I would apologize upfront itself. You truly know that this is not the case. Yes. And for students who are watching this much after the live stream, you can forward to the part where I actually start teaching you. You can skip through this particular portion. Okay, hello to all my students like Shivita, Ritu, Shrishti, Ayushmati, uh, uh, no, Ayushmita, Aerozone, Hania, who's calling me Ali Kusaris, okay, Nobita, Tanishka, Dipal. Okay, to all my new students, I welcome you as well. Welcome to your live class with me. Okay, very good all of you, very good anime artist, ha ha, okay, lot of highs coming my way, amazing. Okay, so let's get started. Now everybody, I would like to have a question for all of you before I get started. Do you know, right, do you know which day is observed on 5th June? Or 5th June is celebrated as World Dash Day, right? So it is celebrated as World Dash Day. What is 5th June celebrated as? Can any of you tell me? Yes, I can say a lot of you students have already got the answer. 5th of June every year is observed as the World Environment Day. So in our class today, we are going to understand a little bit about what is environment. We will learn about the components of environment and we will learn about the ecosystem as well. So these are things that we are going to be learning about today. Now to talk about the environment, we started our class by going to my room, showing you my beautiful TV, my pillows, my cupboards. And then I went on to show you what was there outside my house. So if you talk about it, if I talk to you about what is there in and around me in office, this is what you see. This is what you see. If from my table, if I take a picture, right? If I take a picture and I show you, this is what you see in and around me. You see my teammates, right? You see Ankita ma'am, Saurabh sir, Akansha ma'am, Hina ma'am, all of them around me really discussing, talking. Along with that, you see what is there in the surrounding also right you see there are tables we see that there are chairs we see that there are some you know indoor plants there are lights there are you know books and helmets and laptops you see that there are a lot of things which are there in my surrounding so this word my surroundings is what we call as environment so what is environment Environment comes from the French word environ, which means that it is surroundings, right? So simply put, environment can be defined as everything that we see in our surroundings. Now here I have a very important question to ask, right? What is there in your environment right now? Yes? What do you find in your environment? Can you tell me right away in the live chat? And for students watching this video much later after the live stream, this is an activity for all of you. Take your pencil and take your notebooks and write down what you observe in your environment. You must be able to have a look, right? You must be able to observe these things. So many of you are telling me, ma'am, laptop, pen, table, chairs, you know, some of you are telling me plants, light. Okay, very good, very good. So now most of you are telling me, ma'am, in my surroundings, right? In my surroundings, I am able to see all of these things. Now I have another question for all of you. How many of you, right, from our lower grades, right, maybe third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, how many of you actually, when I say the word environment, right, when I say the word environment, 
How many of you actually think about something like this? You think about plants, you think about sunlight, you think about a lot of greenery. Be honest with me. How many of you imagine always the word environment first and foremost helps us think about plants, animals, then it makes us think about more of nature, right? We don't really think about table, chair, people, no. But rather we actually think about all of these things. Now my question is, does this belong to the environment? Yes or no? Do these things like human, water, mountain, light, air, plants, rocks, microbes, are these part of the environment? Yes or no? Yes. It's actually part of the environment because they are part of our surroundings. So to quickly summarize, the environment that is there is basically whatever we find in our surroundings, right? So if I'm within my room, maybe my lights, my table, my chair, these are all said to be my surroundings. They are my immediate surroundings, right? But at the same time, if I also tell you that there is plant and there is road and this and that, that is also part of my surrounding when I get out to it. So a surrounding can consist of places, a surrounding can consist of people, it can consist of things, it can consist of natural elements or also. So simply put, the place, people, things, nature, anything that surrounds the living organism is what we call as the environment. So now we're clear with what is environment. We know that at any point, if I ask you what is the environment in your classroom or what is the environment in your room, you are all able to answer, right? So far are we good to go? Any doubts which are there so far? I will take a quick doubt board right now. Or are we good to go? Easy peasy concept, right? Okay. Um, Tabres, can we please minimize the self view? Reduce the size of self view. Okay. Yes. Any doubts? Everything is clear. Shivam Gamer, you can ask me your doubts, Bacha Nandini. Nilu ecosystem economic. I am going to explain all of that, right? Don't worry. I explain once again definitely, right? Our friends are our environment. Absolutely, you can say that also. So technically, what is an environment? Environment is nothing but our surroundings, right? So anything in our surrounding is what we call as our environment. Now this anything that I tell you which is in my surrounding, which is in and around me, what, are, what am I able to see around me? Near me I have a keyboard, right? Near me I am able to find my water bottle, I am able to find a sanitizer bottle, I sanitizer, sorry sanitizer spelling takes me a while, sanitizer bottle, I am able to see my friend Tabrez who is sitting with me here, I can see you know laptops, I can see camera. So this is everything around me, right? So anything which is there in my surrounding is in my environment. Now we have a misconception, ma'am, only natural things are in our environment. No. See, only natural things are in our environment is not the case, right? That is not the case. As a matter of fact, in our environment, we find both natural and man-made as well. Ma'am, can we say that the whole world is surrounded by the environment? Oh, very interesting question. Can we say that our whole world is surrounded? We can say that our whole world, if you take me as an example, my whole world is my environment, right? Okay. Ma'am, does space, is space our environment? No. If you go to space, then space is your environment. Okay. Ma'am, is mobile also? Yeah, yeah, mobile is part of your environment, right? It is all part of your environment. Ecosystem, Neelu Bacha, I will tell you. Domain, I will tell you later. Let me first finish all of these things, right? Very good. Man-made things and natural things are part of it, which is why you need to understand components of environment. How will you understand? Okay, see, you know what is environment. See, you only need to understand that environment means surrounding. Now, what goes in my surrounding is where we need to talk about components of environment. So what is there as a part of components? There are three components. Focus, right? Focus. So here you have natural components, you have human components and you have human made components. So for students who want to see ma or ask these questions, ma'am space, ma'am this, ma'am that. So for all of you, this is what you need to focus on. Components, write this down. Natural, human, human made, right? So now of course we know that these are the components. Now natural components we will explore a little bit in greater detail. But mainly they include all our natural elements, right? Basically water, air, 
animals so on and so forth which we will explore a little more in detail as to what are the natural components of the environment but what are human components can you tell me what are the human components students in the live chat can give me the answer students watching this video take a minute pause to think what could be human components yes okay Ma'am, humans also, ah, very good. I like, I will take this question. Ma'am, human is also nature only, no? Why, then why are we considering it separately? Yes, very good. See, because human population is such, right, that we have over time modified the environment. So we will talk about this in greater detail as the impact of humans on the environment, right? So now, of course, human components that are there include individuals. So, you as an individual, me as an individual come as a, comes as a human component, right? Yes. So can we move me to the other side? Okay. All right. So no, let me put, let's put us back. I think it's a static frame. Okay. So now we know that individuals, your family is in your surrounding. It's a human component. Society or community becomes a part of it. Now, many of you are asking me, ma'am, what is economy? What is economic? So, economic, if I have to put it to you in very easy words, I'm not going to give you very heavy words, right? So, us as a country, right, we have certain money coming in, we see that there is some money going out, right, and we have livelihoods, we are able to generate income, and as a result, overall, we are able to, you know, boost the development and the growth of it. This is what we understand as the economy, right? So when we say that the economy of our country is grown, it's basically how well developed we are as a country, right? And along with that, things like education and, you know, politics, these are all which comes as a part of human, especially human relations, right? It comes in human environment because all this involves humans interacting with each other. But then what is the difference between human made? Human made, think about it. What we make physically, that means what I can see, like road, school, classroom, right? Maybe bridges, monuments. All these buildings, these are all our robots, yes. So what is a human environment which includes humans and human concepts like economy, education which has been brought in. What is human made? Human made that is there is what we make. Are we clear? Are we clear with all of these concepts? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, bridge, monument, coding, ha ha, very good. Ma'am, environment is only matter. We cannot say that, bacha. See, exactly. Matter and surroundings I matter is only matter or sound and light are also environment. See, when you talk about it in your environment, it includes your surroundings, right? So that is something. Ecosystem, I have not explained. I am yet to explain. Don't take stress. Okay, very good. Industries, yes. See, simply put, let me give you the answer, right? Human made. So wherever there is humans involved, I'm going to give you simple definitions of my own, right? Wherever humans are involved or whatever we have sort of invented, I would say, right? So whatever we, in, in the sense that whatever concepts that we have brought together, like for example, when you think about politics, right? Politics or so let me take education as a matter of fact now right now. I am educating you. I am talking to you, right? I am teaching you which is why in this case this conversation that is happening is between two humans So this right here is a human environment or components of a human environment. Yes, but when I say it is a human made one now here I am talking with whatever is physical, right? That means I can see it, right? That means I have built it. This is why we call this as human made. Are we clear? Yes or no? Deepal, I will explain toward that towards the end, right? Why is it important to save plants? Very, very important. Ma'am, does na nature is matter? Or does nature matter? Nature matters, right? And see, when you talk about matter, right? Matter at the end of the day, whether solid, liquid or gas, you find it in and around you, which is part of the environment, right? We are also part of the environment. I understand for some books, there are only two components, but I am following CBSC. I am following NCRT, right? That is what I am following. So everybody, please cooperate with me. My mayor is environment. Ha ha, it is environment. Okay, all of that is environment. 
Now shall we focus a little bit more on nature and the natural components, right? Okay. Suresh, there is a way of communicating your thoughts, there is a way of asking your doubts, kindly maintain the decorum of the class, right? For all students who are new to my class and probably you are attending this for the first time, I am very strict when it comes to the way you speak and interact because at the end of the day, the way we should communicate with each other is very, very important, right? Because we are all good students, we are all going to be kind students of tomorrow, we should not be speaking in you know inappropriate ways right if you have a doubt if I'm not addressing your doubt you can ask me but at the same time I'm your teacher also so there's a way right yes Tejasvi I am not ignoring you you are saying this so that I pick your name but if I've missed your doubt I will definitely take it out right I will definitely take your doubts yes now I want to know if I have taught you so much or whatever I've taught so far is clear yes or no I need a thumbs up yes Okay, yes or no? Pragya, that's a very controversial, I will not say controversial, but yeah, it's a little bit of grey area, but I will tell you. Notes and PDF will be shared with you as well. Okay, Bebo Singh, more doubts that you have, probably you are not able to follow my pace of teaching. You can just rewind back and slower the pace and you will be able to understand, okay? Very good, very good. Now, let's go a little bit more deeper into natural surroundings. Uh, Tabriz, you can bring me back to my normal position. Okay, so now of course let's move on to our natural surroundings, yes? Now in our natural surroundings we have human, water, animal, soil, microorganisms, mountain, rock, light, air, plant, so on and so forth, right? So now of course I have an activity for all of you. I need all of you to identify which among the following. So from this environment, now we are in a particular immediate environment, right? So in this environment I need you to understand right I need you to understand and identify how many of them are living yes in the chat can you let me know how many of these com how many of these things that are there are living yes Dritisha has told me ma'am plants animals humans very good okay microorganisms very good Banshika very good Tejasvi animals are there yes very good very good exactly so broadly these four components that are there we see that humans animals microorganisms plants in broad ways are said to be the living components now we say that because they are living components we also call them as biotic components please make a note of this star mark this in your textbook put a star put a cross i mean or put a you know this kind of a important sign next to it so all living components i am stressing this once again all living organisms uh, make up the biotic components, right? Ha, duck bhi hoga. Ha, duck and everything is there. But I think they just highlighted. Ha, this is also there. Animals. Done. Right? Yes. Okay. Motivation, please. Please. Requesting you to unnecessarily not spam all of this. Moving on, I needed to identify the, you know, non-living things out of this right now moving on i need you to identify whatever is non-living so shall i go back i need you to now identify whatever is non-living in this case yes yes astha i think sejal has given me ma'am air light water uh rock soil they're all non-living okay very good so rock let me use my brighter color rock water mountain light air soil all of these are said to be non-living right now here again these are non-living that means they don't they don't like breathe eat food and all that like us but they are non-living and because they are non-living we call them as abiotic components right so they call it as abiotic components now in your examination they can ask you two kinds of questions identify the two components of the natural environment everybody give me the answer to this identify the two components of the natural environment yes 
कैन यू टेल मी वॉट आर द टू कॉम्पोनेट ऑफ द नेचुरल एनवायरमेंट राइट ब्रॉडली एग्जैक्टली वी हैव बायोटिक एंड ए बायोटिक एवरीबडी यू कैन ड्राइव दिस क्वेश्चन डाउन यू हैव ए बायोटिक कॉम्पोनेट एंड यू हैव बायोटिक कॉम्पोनेट यस now next another question they can ask you right second question they can ask you is difference between biotic component and a biotic component what is the difference between the two they can ask this for two marks right so they can ask you this particular difference now this way i am not only you know teaching you this i'm not only you know just giving you questions but these are questions that will come in your exams and i'm clearing your doubts right so you can write one side biotic and on the other side you can put a table and put a biotic so under biotic what can you write biotic includes all the living organisms or you can say living things and here you can write this includes all the non living things then you can give some examples because it is two marks right very good tejasvi avni and purvi tanishka very good so now you have to give examples also right so for living you can write plants you can say animals then you can put microorganisms anything you want to write which are living non living pay you can write water air right and you can talk about rock soil whatever you need to do so everybody take a quick screenshot take a quick screenshot of this and you can take a quick thumbs up and once you are done give me a quick thumbs up rajiv sharma you can ask me your doubt yes okay ma'am can bacteria be biotic yes ma'am will be write in sentence or words you will write in sentence i have written in pointer so that it's easy right otherwise i'll spend a long time very good very good so now i give you another task also right this also i need you to try it for yourself now broadly i want you to identify the living components from this everybody identify all the biotic components now this is another challenge for all of you take your notebooks and pens and write down the biotic components now students watching this post after the live and when you are watching this later pause this video right now and you can watch this particular part yes okay i can see the answers coming in i can see plant fish duck birds five of them are there everybody has given me broadly ma'am five five six things are there you got the answer yes very good you are all able to give me the answer now quickly identify the abiotic component quickly identify the abiotic components okay see Suresh and many others who are telling me, ma'am, screen is not clear. I request you all to please go, go to settings. You have one settings option. Go there, go to advanced settings and put 720p. You will be able to see it. Yes, very good. Uh, rock, soil, air, water. Ha ha. Yes, very good, very good. Th these are all the abiotic components. Now, if you think about it, no, I have air. i have water and i have soil right i have soil now when i look at soil what if you look at soil soil is very hard it's very rocky and if i look at water water is very flowy and when i look at air can i even see air can i see the air that is around me yes or no can i observe the air around me yes or no as a matter of fact no right we'll not be able to see the air but we know air is there so these are all three very different things that we see around us which is why these three in itself form three spheres yes so you think about if i have air water and land on my earth and i take each of it one by one they form three different categories so kind of like how in a school you have students right in a school you will have students but the students are divided into four houses you will have green house you will have red house you will have blue house and you will have maybe 
which house am I missing? Ha, orange house that is there. So at the end of the day, all students are divided into different houses, right? Which is why something very similar is seen in earth as well, right? Which is why in this case, if you see all the land, okay, I take all of this land and then I make it into a particular part, right? We call this land, all the land that is there as lithosphere, right? So lithosphere that is there in constitutes all of the land. So you can say that the lithosphere is the hard top layer of the earth, right? And what is land made up of? Can you tell me what is land made up of at the end of the day? Quickly, what is land made up of? Very simple and easy. Yes, Vanchika has given me the answer. Ma'am, it includes the crust of the earth, outermost layer. It has soil. At the end of the day, soil is made up of, or it's formed from rocks that are there, right? And we know that in, in the soil, we also find important minerals which are there. Now, very quickly, how is the surface? How when you look at rocks or when you look at soil, is it a smooth surface or is it a rocky surface or I would say an uneven surface? When you observe rocks or when you look at soil, is it smooth or is it as a up, upper niche, upper niche? It's a little irregular, right? It's uneven. See, whenever you draw soil, you will, I mean, in our childhood, we used to draw like this. But over time, you know, we'll draw something of this sort, right? It's a little uneven or it's a little irregular. And of course, we know that various landforms. Now, landforms are very, you know, fancy word. But landforms are basically things like mountains, plateau, all of these things that are there, we find them on your land that is there, right? Or which we find in our lithosphere. Yes, Suresh Bacha, what is your question? I think I missed it. So please send it to me. I will take your doubts, right? Now, how important is lithosphere? Yes, let's focus on how important it is. Is lithosphere important? Yes or no? Is it important for us? Think about it first. Yes or no? First, think about it. Okay. Okay. Everybody is telling me, ma'am, lithosphere is very important. Now, think about why we need to think about lithosphere, right? Or why is land important to us? Why should we focus on land? Why is land important to us? Yes? Okay, why is land important to us? What do we use our land for? We live on land. Very good, Tanishka. We live on land. Okay. To grow crops, to grow plants, right? So we need that. No, to live and to survive. We get crops from the land, right? So we also need to make sure that there's good agriculture happening. It is the base. Very good. Exactly. Now, along with that, if I want to build industries and if I need minerals, right? Everything I will get from my land. We see that inland we have forest, grassland. Very good. Very good. Exactly. Exactly, right? So land is required for various purposes. To, to summarize, we saw that the lithosphere that is there, right? So the lithosphere that is there includes the solid crust. It includes the solid crust or the hard top layer, right? So it is the hard top layer of earth. Now, what is it made of? It is made up of rocks, it is made up of minerals and it has soil in it. Now, how does it look like? So, it is uneven or you can say it is irregular. Yes, what does it include? So, I'm going to put a question mark. What does it include? It includes mountains, it includes plains like how all of you told me and it includes plat toes as well right and of course why is it important to us it is important to us because we are dependent on this lithosphere for agriculture yes and we know that it is forest it includes grasslands so on and so forth right so all of these things are included are we clear aditya and many others now with respect to Atmosphere, uh, hydrosphere, I am going to explain it in the next thing. Next is hydrosphere and atmosphere. But in this, how many of you have a doubt? Please ask the question. Aditya, I am going to explain hydrosphere, I mean atmosphere. Please wait, bacha. Okay? Are you clear with whatever I've taught you so far? Yes? 
So far are you okay with me? Greenhouse in atmosphere. Yes. Thank you Nandini. Thank you. But you said you had a doubt. This is a doubt board. Yes. Please doubt board right now. Doubt board for lithosphere. Those of you who are going to tell me about atmosphere. I am going to teach you. Whatever I am about to teach you. If you tell me ma, what is it. Then what will I do? Greenhouse Nilu, I will tell you in some time. No doubt. Right. Hi Seema and Sial. Hello. Have you all taken screenshot? Shall I move ahead? Ma'am, very good. What if lithosphere is removed? See, what if there was no lithosphere, right? Why, what if there was no lithosphere? Now, if land was not there, if the solid crust was not there, then we would see that over time there would be no terrestrial organisms. Animals, plants which survive on land. Without land, will they be able to survive? Absolutely not, right? Yes. Ma'am, but in agricultural field, land is smooth. Yeah, yeah. So, Mishika, see, I can smoothen out my land. But we are talking about how naturally, right? Naturally, how would we observe the land? It's a little bit upper niche. Yes. Tejasvi, I will look at my phone. I would have missed your doubt quite genuinely. Not that I'm purposely, in, you know, ignoring you. I cannot see your doubt, Tejasvi. Ma'am, lithosphere meaning once again, lithosphere is the domain. It is the part of the earth which includes all the land. It includes the solid crust, right? That is important. Will you do the topic, Bebo? Uh, yeah, the topic I am going to do. Yes? Are we good to go? Shall I move on to the next part? Okay? Very good. Moving on, right? Ma'am, are you angry? Are you? No, no, I am not angry. I am. Students, please, I'm not angry. When I teach, I may have a straight face. But I'm not angry. Please, don't take it that way. I know all of you have a lot of doubts and you're very excited. So I'm taking my time and I'm teaching. That's all. Okay, I just need you all to be a little patient in class. You all want the answer so fast. But I need to take some time, no? Yes, man-made competence, Abhirami, your bridge, water. I mean, your bridge, house, school, classroom. They are all your man-made components. Yes, I'm your surrounding. Okay? Now coming on to the next part. Now we are moving on to the next bigger aspect, right? Which includes all my water. All my water is going to include which domain, which of it. Abhirami, I have answered your doubt, right? Now tell me, which one is this? Which includes all my water? Exactly, it is the hydrosphere, right? So when you talk about it, hydrosphere includes all the water right it includes all the water that i find under and on the surface of the earth right now why is water necessary can you tell me is this even a question that i have to ask why is hydrosphere an important domain or an important category can you tell me ha ah, nandini has told me ma'am life that's it to live right all living organisms require water to survive. We know that there are various living organisms which live in water as well. So water that is there is almost called as elixir of life because without water we may not be able to survive for a long period of time. And we see that there are different kinds of water bodies also, right? So we see that there are oceans, there are seas, then we see that there is river, there is lake pond, stream, so on and so forth, different ways in which we find water. And we know that closer to water, we saw that earlier in the days, we humans went and settled because easy access to water as well. So it is important to life. So now when you think about it, you have your earth, right? And earth has three large groups or I can say three large domains, right? And what are the first domain? First was lithosphere. The second domain we studied was hydrosphere. And the third domain that is there is the atmosphere, right? Yes, hydro means water. Now atmosphere. Many, many students have a doubt here. Ma'am, what is this atmosphere? Yes? How many of you truly have a doubt in understanding what is an atmosphere? Yes? Be honest with me right now in the live chat. And for students who have this doubt later, you can take a minute, right? Realms, you can say, but realms is a very fancy word, right? Oh, okay. Ma'am, no doubts. Oh, not me. No problem. See, if this is your earth, right? So this is my cute little earth. Okay, beautiful planet earth which I am going to draw. Okay. 
Now, for in my earth, what do I find? I saw that on the surface of my earth, I have my lithosphere, right? I have my lithosphere. Then I know that I have my hydrosphere, which is my water bodies, right? I have my second domain, which is my hydrosphere. And both in my lithosphere and in my hydrosphere or in both these domains, you see that we find living organisms, right? We observe that there are certain living organisms which are found. Now for living organisms to survive, right? So for living organisms to survive, they require energy, no? Energy is required. Now for energy to be required, we need to breathe, right? All of us need to breathe, yes? We all need to breathe and we need oxygen specifically. Now oxygen here that is there is a gas, right? Oxygen is a gas which is there. And like that if you see there are many gases. But the thing is, we are not able to see it. And we see that in our surroundings, we don't only find oxygen. But rather, in our surroundings, we find a mixture of gases, right? I find a mixture of gases in my surroundings. And this mixture of gases is what we call as air. Now, how many of you know what all gases do we find in our air? Yes or no? Can you tell me what are all the gases that we find in the surroundings or what makes up the air? Very good. Exactly. Yes. Tejasvi and many others, I'm going to take that doubt. Just, I request all of you to be little patient and listen to me. It's not like I won't teach you. I will teach you. I just need you to be patient. Exactly. So you have nitrogen, right? Then you have oxygen. Now you know about 78% of the air is nitrogen, about 21% is oxygen. Then you have carbon dioxide. Right, so you have carbon dioxide which is 0.04%. Then of course you have less than 1%, right? So less than 1% of some other gases like helium, so on and so forth. Now interesting thing is this is a mixture. Now because it's a mixture, what we see is that this whole gas, no, all of this, it forms a blanket. It is surrounding the earth, right? It is surrounding the earth and it acts as a blanket which surrounds the earth. So if I were to define this, I'll use another color. Okay. Blanket of air that surrounds, right? Or I'll add a, another word, thin blanket of air that surrounds the earth is what we call as atmosphere. Are we all clear? Yes or no, right? Are we all clear? What is atmosphere? Have we visualized what is atmosphere? Yes? Please write this down. Please, everybody, write this down. This is very, very important. Now, many of you are asking me because of some students who ask this doubt, right? Many of you asked me, ma'am, what is this word greenhouse, okay? What is the word greenhouse? See, greenhouse that is there is basically, actually in a man-made one, it's a glass house that is there which has the ability to trap sunlight, okay? So, it is a glass house which will look like this, which is made of glass. Just that whatever sunlight, right, enters into this glass house, it will get trapped. And normally people use this glass house or this greenhouse to grow some plants, right? So that is what we mean as greenhouse. But now the interesting thing is carbon dioxide that is there, right? So we have only 0.04% of carbon dioxide. And normally what happens is that when sunlight enters, right, into the earth, like when it enters into the earth, sunlight is also reflected out, right? It's reflected out. But now what happens is that at times when there is too much of carbon dioxide because of pollution, right? When there is too much of carbon dioxide, this sunlight can get trapped, right? So we see that this heat gets trapped. Now when this heat gets trapped, we see that this will cause a greenhouse effect. Now the area or the temperature will become more, right? So that is what we call as greenhouse effect. And eventually this greenhouse effect will lead to something called as global warming. Where the temperature all throughout the earth will increase. So the globe, whole globe will become warm. That's global warming, right? 
What if there is no atmosphere? See, atmosphere that is there, if there was no atmosphere, life would not be possible, right? So because we have 78%, 28%, I mean 21%, we are able to survive, right? But because if atmosphere was not there, we will not be able to survive. It's as simple as that, yes? Now somebody is asking me ma'am what is ozone layer? Now ozone layer is a specific layer, I will use red color, which is part of the atmosphere. We will learn all of this in greater detail, don't worry, you, okay. So ozone layer that is there is part of the atmosphere which blocks, right. So we see that it blocks the harmful rays of the sun. Right? So we see that the sun also brings in some harmful rays. It will make sure that that doesn't enter. Yes? Okay. Are we all clear? For Shimona, I will explain this once again. But so far, are we all clear with the concept of atmosphere? Yes? Are we all clear? Yes or no? Okay. Ma'am, how do gases trap heat? That's a very interesting question. See, the carbon dioxide molecules that are there, no, they have the ability to absorb some of it. They have the ability to allow, prevent it from reflecting basically, right, from going out. That is how it is trapping it. Yes? So, this is what we mean by atmosphere. So, it is a layer of gases or thin blanket of gases at the end of the day which surrounds the air, which surrounds the atmosphere, right? Now, is there a hole in ozone? Yes, there is an ozone hole, which is caused. See, ozone also gets affected. We learn about this in the later classes and separately. But basically, due to some harmful, you know, emissions and, you know, due to a lot of pollution that we have caused as human beings, we have damaged our ozone, resulting in ozone hole, right? So, it is there and it is present over America. Antarctica, I was going to say America. Yes, due to chlorofluorocarbons. I do Shubha, I do take geography for class 9. I will take also. Very soon I will be taking class for you. Don't worry, don't spam. Right? Now of course, at the end of the day, right? This atmosphere that is there. Atmosphere, your hydrosphere, your lithosphere. All of this makes it possible. Right? All of these domains come together to give us biosphere. Now what is biosphere? Biosphere is the narrow zone. It is the part of the earth where air, water, land all interact with each other, right? So if you think about it, if this is my earth, I will not draw a red earth. But if it is my earth, I see that there is a small narrow portion where all these three meet and life is possible. That is what we call as biosphere, right? So that is what we call as biosphere. So far, are we clear? Ma'am, what can we do to change the form of water on Mars? See, the kind of atmosphere, some of them are asking me, ma'am, other planets don't have atmosphere. That is not the case. See, for example, if you take Venus as a planet, they also have some atmosphere. But it is not like Earth. The air, if you see, you know, the composition of air, how there is exactly 78% of nitrogen, only 21% of oxygen or only 0.04% of carbon dioxide, those kind of things actually make life possible. It's not that other planets do not have an atmosphere. They do, but it's not made up of these kind of gases, right? It is quite different, which is why life is not possible. Yes, greenhouse effect, Shimona, I will do this once again. See, basically, normally what happens is that whenever there is sunlight, whatever sunlight enters is reflected out, right? It is sent out from the earth. Let me draw that properly. Okay, so this is my sun and this is my sunlight. Now, this is possible because of the atmosphere that is there and the composition of it. That there is 78% nitrogen, there is 21% of oxygen and there is 0.04% of carbon dioxide. But if this carbon dioxide level becomes more, say let's say it becomes maybe 4%. Now, that means more of carbon dioxide is there, right? So, you imagine this carbon dioxide to be like some red dots. So, a lot of carbon dioxide has increased in my atmosphere, right? So, now because of this what happens? The sunlight will not get reflected out. But instead, the sunlight will be trapped within the atmosphere only. As a result, we see that the temperature that is there will increase, yes? It has various different... What are all... 
Mans, Manisha, this is a homework for you. Identify the components of Venus. What is there in the atmosphere of Venus, right? Ma'am, what does end of, I say end of the day a lot. It doesn't mean much, right? Ma'am, what do we have to do? Lot of technology is required to change the kind of, see, first and foremost, they have found traces. But traces and there's again a lot of debate which is happening around for, you know, environment and hab, uh, hab, how habitable Mars is. So there's a lot of, you know, um, environment that is done, right? I mean, there's a lot of, um, what do you say, research which is still being done. Ma'am, why minerals have more have economic value than money? Minerals bring in the economic value, right? So basically, by trading and selling one, uh, uh, this one, trading and selling of minerals and utilizing them is where we bring in the money. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Suppose carbon dioxide will be lost from. Oh, very nice question. What if carbon dioxide is not there? Why is it that we have 0.04 percent? What if there was no carbon dioxide? There's a reason why we have 0.04 percent. The thing is, you need to have some amount of carbon dioxide because some amount, see, if like say three rays, I'm giving you hypothetically, right? So some amount of heat should be trapped so that we can survive as humans, right? The heat that is there. You imagine if it was some minus 50 degrees Celsius, will be humans be able to survive? No, right? And that goes on if it is plus 50 degrees also. Ideally, a temperature between maybe say, 15 degrees to 35 degrees is very ideal, right? I'm giving you an ideal scenario. But no carbon dioxide means again, no photosynthesis happening. And if there's no carbon dioxide, the basic temperature only will not be maintained in the earth. And no longer can life survive, right? Now, why do we say it's a narrow zone? Because it's a point where all three meet, right? So that is what we mean by it. Now, from this biosphere, what can you understand? You can understand that all these non-living things, right? So all the non-living components are interacting, yes? So we see that they are interacting with your living components, yes or no? When I say interacting, that means I am drinking water, right? So I am drinking water. I am breathing in the air, yes? I am breathing in the air. I am living on land. I am, you know, I am making sure that I am surviving. Yes. So now I am interacting. Yes or no? Do you all agree? Yes or no? We are interacting. Do you all agree with this? I knew, I need all of you to tell me yes or no. Yes. We all agree, right? That we are interacting. This is what we call as an ecosystem, right? So what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is different from an environment, okay? Ecosystem is not the same as environment. Please understand. What is environment? It could just be anything in my surrounding. Right now I have a sanitizer bottle. I am not touching it. I am not interacting with it. I have a water bottle. I am not drinking water. It is as, you know, it is here. I have a camera there. I am not touching it. I am not interacting with it. Right? So that is in my surrounding. I need not interact. But in an ecosystem, things will interact. They will, you know, maybe... For example, we see that there will be exchange happening. So when I'm breathing in, I'm taking in the air. I am taking. And when I breathe out, I'm giving out that air. I am exchanging, right? Now, similarly, when I'm drinking the water and eventually I'm excreting air, there is interaction, there is exchange taking place. So if you think about it, you think about how a plant grows, right? A plant grows by taking in water from the soil, right? It takes, and for producing food, it takes carbon dioxide from the air. It utilizes the sunlight, right? So for growth, this living organism is interacting, right? So it is interacting. I'm taking non-living things and I'm using it. Now at the same time, we see that it there is interaction amongst living things also. So ecosystem, as much as I say, is an interaction between living and non-living components, it is also between living components, right? See, today if you are eating uh, food or if you are eating maybe say aluki sabzi, yes, plants are living, right? And you are eating it. So in this case, 
consumption by a deer is living organism. Plant, here if you see there is deer eating the plant. Then eventually we see that when the deer passes away, we see that it will get mixed with the soil. It will go back to the soil. And eventually we see that these nutrients which are again broken, I mean which is given to the soil by the breakdown of the deer and you know decomposition. We see that it goes back and it gets utilized. So simply put, what is ecosystem? Ecosystem can be defined as an interaction between abiotic and biotic components and between biotic components. Are we all clear? Yes or no? Ahmed Motors, if you spam saying Hindi, I am not very comfortable with Hindi, which is why I will teach in English. Barter sister is exchange, right? Simply, simply put. Hint game and Pragya. Let me tell you this once again. I have drawing one scenery, which I used to draw all the time. Oh, okay. Ankita ma'am is here. I still have two more things to teach ma'am. I need five minutes. Okay. See, now this is me and this is Ankita ma'am. We are in a scenery. Now at this point, what is happening? At this point, if you see, I am breathing in air. I am drinking water from here. I am living on land. So I am interacting, right? So I am interacting with my surroundings. So this is what I mean by an ecosystem where I am interacting. Yes, which is why in this case, this right here is very, very important. And here when I am interacting, I also need food, which means I might eat some of these plants which are available to me. Right. So here I am interacting with living organisms also. This is what we mean by an ecosystem. Yes. So everybody, I do understand further doubts are there. You can let me know in the comments because we are going a little short on time, which is why we're going to quickly move on to the last part, right? And this is a question for all of you. Do you think that the environment that is there around us is changing? I need you to tell me yes or no. Is the environment that is there in our surrounding changing? Intelligent boy, jaldi aayega abhi. Kuchhi dino mein aayega. Yes. Now I need you to tell me, okay, everybody in the live chat tells me, mom, yes, and it keeps changing. Now my question to you is, why do you say that it is changing? So we learned about biotic, abiotic components and all of that. But why are you telling me that, mom, it is going to change? My environment is actually going to change. What is the reason behind it? Quickly, I need you to tell me why. Now you told me, yes, now think about it. Because humans are modifying it. Sign has given me a good answer. Okay, ma'am, pollution also. Abhirami says, ma'am, changes per our need. Human activity. Somebody's telling global warming. Ha. But good, right? Human beings, see, as much as I told you, animals are there, plants are there, and you know, hydrosphere, lithosphere, interaction is not restricted there, right? Interaction goes beyond because even we humans are interacting with our environment. And humans here, we modify it as per our need yes now let me give you an example of bangalore yes now i moved to bangalore when i was in 2000 right in the year 2000 is when i moved to bangalore and now all the way i am up to 2023 now Bangalore has undergone so many changes, right? Because earlier I would see that, you know, there were not a lot of these cabs and, you know, things like that. Yes. So give me some simple examples. We saw that maybe earlier in 2005, probably, you see that there would be no, you know, all this, um, you know, transport services where you can book a cab, right? So I would say no um, transport applications. I'll use apps as a word, right? You never had all these transport applications where I could book it. Similarly, much later when I was, I remember when I was in 10th standard, right? I remember that there was metro services which had come into the picture. And now because they had to construct metro, we saw that the surrounding, yes, 
in order to build the metro there were various changes which were brought in the surroundings and over time if you see in order to accommodate more and more buildings restaurants uh, you know schools and so many more things we see that at the end of the day our surroundings are constantly changing now this i am just telling you between 2000 to 2023 my experience now you think about it from when you were a young baby probably when you were probably in your lower grades right when you would remember how you would visit your grandparents and everything see that things constantly change right over a period of time we observe that there are changes we see in our surroundings every day sometimes some trees get cut because they or you know some land some new building is coming up how many of you have noticed this yes how many of you have noticed this in your surroundings exactly environmental changes are not just natural but it's also human based right so in order to make sure that we accommodate what we require right which is why we see that for growing more crops to domesticate animals and various changes we keep changing our surroundings now of course at the end of the day it is important that we keep a perfect balance right so a perfect balance between natural and human environment yes must be maintained now at this point of course there is no perfect balance which has been yet created because right now we are exploiting the natural environment we are cutting down trees we are degrading the soil we are polluting the water we don't have we have not established this right we have not established this perfect balance yes now saina tells me ma'am near my grandparents house there was a park but now they cut it and made it into a mall so are we having a perfect balance yes or no how many of you feel this way have we actually had a perfect balance lot of activities that we do as a matter of fact no we have not established it but as students of tomorrow as leaders of tomorrow you should be the one who should be making sure that we make it a point to establish a perfect balance right so quickly to summarize what we have learned so far we learned about what is an environment we learned about how there are different types of environment and what is an ecosystem to answer a question which uh, somebody had asked me whose name i don't remember somebody asked me ma'am interdependence of all organisms did we cover it right we did cover interdependence because earlier when i was teaching you this particular part let me just quickly move on in an ecosystem when it comes to growth of a plant consumption of deer and death of deer and again growth this is interdependence which i have explained to you right so which is why this right here a living organisms are you know dependent on plants right As especially herbivores that are there are dependent on plants there are other animals which feed on these animals also and this again i'm not really covered in geography but i've done it separately in a biology lesson which says let's discover nutrition you can go check that video out as well it will definitely help you so everybody with this of course we have covered a very major part i've covered the whole chapter now of course i hope that all of you here right i hope all of you here are cleared with this particular chapter now tejasvi and many others i do understand in the live audience a lot of students have doubts so for those questions that you have because ankita ma'am is waiting for her class and she needs to take the next class i may not be able to take your doubts live so you can let me know in the comments of this video so that i can clarify your doubts immediately and of course for the others who don't have doubts if this is a homework question for all of you which are the major components of the environment right which are the major components can you all tell me you need to let me know in the comments of this video sure i know i took 22 minutes extra but that does not mean that your understanding has become any less right lot of students had doubts which is why i was making sure i was clarifying it and of course with this everybody we came to the end of today's class i hope all of you enjoyed if you did i request you all to not to forget to hit the subscribe button on this video do not forget to like this video as well and if you enjoyed it let me know in the comments of this video and let me know what exactly you enjoyed in today's class right and of course for further doubts i see lot of interesting questions which i want to answer but due to shortage of time i may not be able to answer it right now but very quickly in the comments i will answer and everybody thank you so much for being such an amazing bunch of students i will see you all soon but up until then everybody take care lots of love and